Hey guys, it's John from Marco Learning. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the sophistication point for AP English language. Before I start, I wanna tell you why you shouldn't be focused on the sophistication point, right? The six point rubric for AP English language this year has five of the six points that are not the sophistication point. Those five points are a lot easier to get than just this one point. So while it's useful to study how the point is awarded, and I hope you all get it, don't focus your energy there, Focus on earning the point for thesis and for evidence and commentary, where you can earn up to four points. And if you haven't already, check out our video on the AP English Language Rubric, where I walk through it point by point. Now, I want to take you to the College Board's official rubric this time. And this is what question two, the rhetorical analysis essay question, looks like on the sophistication row. Now, you can see all of these different uh, buttons over here, 8A and 2A. There's all these different rules and regulations. I'll walk you through each part of this. So sophistication is one of those six points that you can be awarded. You can either get zero points, does not meet the criteria, or one point. Let's start with how the point can be earned. Response demonstrates sophistication of thought and or a complex understanding of the rhetorical situation. So there's two ways to earn this point. And remember something about sophistication, guys. This is one of the only holistic points, the overall feeling points, right? The thesis point, you either earn it or you don't. Evidence and commentary is between zero and four. Sophistication is more up to the reader to say, yeah, I think that the ideas were sophisticated or the style was sophisticated. So there's more than one way to earn it. You don't just earn it in a single sentence or two the way you do with thesis. It says, responses that earn this point may demonstrate sophistication of thought and or a complex understanding of the rhetorical situation by doing any of the following. So let's zoom in on this. You can explain the significance or relevance of the writer's rhetorical choices given the rhetorical situation. You can expand in your introduction and conclusion on the overall view of the rhetorical situation. So you should be doing that throughout your essay, but if you have a discussion of the significance or relevance that is especially interesting to your reader, that can earn you the point. You can also earn it by explaining a purpose or function of the passage's complexities or tensions. Well, what does that mean? What's complexity? What's tension? Tension is about a contradiction of some kind or another, right? The truth isn't often as simple as black and white. And so when a writer is making a rhetorical choice, sometimes that writer is shifting between one audience and another, or for one purpose and a secondary purpose. Sometimes authors seem to almost contradict themselves. They want to look forward to the future and progress, but also look back to tradition. If you can show that complexity, that tension, you can earn the sufficient sophistication point. The final way is by employing a style that's consistently vivid and persuasive. You need to write well. That's one way to earn the sophistication point is through beautiful prose. Um, this is really hard to do. Remember, you've only got 45 minutes to write the essay and five minutes to submit it. You're typing on a word processor, you're handwriting your responses, whatever you're doing, it's really hard to get out of the first draft mode. And remember, your readers are expecting that this will be a first draft. So if your first draft is particularly vivid or persuasive, and that's consistent throughout the passage, that's one reason that the, that the reader can give you this point. So again, it could be a combination of one, two, and three, or one and three, or just one. But these are the three reasons that the College Board's given to official readers to assign you the sophistication point. Now, if we go over here, we can see some of the things that, that do not earn the sophistication point. For example, the first bullet here says, you attempt to contextualize the text, but such attempts consist predominantly of sweeping generalizations. So what's a sweeping generalization? This is a claim that's so vague, it has nothing to do with the actual passage you're reading. They want you to talk about the specific rhetorical situation in which this author is speaking to his or her audience, not stuff about how throughout the ages mankind has explored the meaning of life and death, right? Stay specific to the, the actual passage you're looking at and you can avoid this problem. The second bullet point says you only hint at or suggest other arguments. So if you, in your conclusion, drift over towards a complex idea but don't really develop it in any substantive way, it's not enough to earn the sophistication point. The third one says that you have examined individual rhetorical choices. Throughout the passage, the author uses diction, syntax, and pathos to achieve his purpose. 
but do not examine the relationships among different choices throughout the passage. So what does the tone shift between paragraphs five and six do to help the author reach her audience? That complexity where rhetorical devices aren't just strategies and tricks that author uses, but there's something that actually the author chooses to develop and accomplish his or her goals. That's what bullet point three is getting at. You wanna avoid that problem. Number four is pretty straightforward. You oversimplify complexities in the passage. So right in the middle of the passage, there's this very nuanced, complicated image, and you just flatten it out to a black and white argument. That's gonna hold you back from earning the sophistication point. And finally, if you use complicated or complex sentences or language that is ineffective because it does not enhance the analysis, if your writing is so weak and thin, it will hold you back from earning the sophistication point. Again, it says here at the bottom, this point should be awarded only if the sophistication of thought or complex understanding is part of the student's argument, not merely a phrase or a reference. So a good analogy here, guys, if you've taken any of the AP history courses, is the complexity point. You don't earn the complexity point on a DBQ or LEQ just with one nice phrase in the introduction or conclusion. It's the overall view. So here's the point. Don't focus and obsess on getting this individual point. Focus and obsess on getting a good thesis that addresses the prompt and analyzes the writer's rhetorical choices. Develop your essay with lots of good evidence that you comment on and connect back to your thesis. And if you're lucky and you do some of the things we just described, you can earn the sophistication point. I know this year's exams are super stressful, so I just wanna wish you guys good luck on your test.